hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, Shamsi Azdani. I'm a group leader of Microbial Engineer Group at International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology in New Delhi. I'm going to present uh, the work that we are doing at our lab on uh, production of advanced biofuels. Uh, so let me give you some background on why are we emphasizing on the biofuel itself. So basically the huge impact on the environment which is made by the fossil fuel is uh, making us uh, uh, believe that the biofuel is a, a, a something that is needed. At this moment, it is around 35 billion ton of carbon dioxide being emitted in the environment and three quarter of which is contributed by usage of uh, fossil fuels. Uh, so uh, basically the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide has a huge life, it's a very long life, and it leads to an uh, uh, increase in the global temperature. And that is why uh, they are involved in the global warming, which impact is leading to rise in the temperature. And uh, uh, the whole Paris Convention has been uh, emphasizing on reducing the uh, global warming uh, because of these uh, rise in the temperature. And eventually it is impacting the loss of glaciers and rise in the sea level and very, very unpredictable uh, global uh, environmental conditions. So very, very recent uh, report of the UN, which I'm highlighting here from the local newspaper, uh, indicate all these uh, issues. And uh, uh, the warning itself from the US Secretary General that uh, uh, it must be sounding a death knell for uh, coal and fossil fuels before they destroy our planet. All this suggests that we need to find an alternative uh, uh, sources for making energy. Now, this is a, a, a very small uh, show to tell you that what are these, uh, uh, in, what are the impacts of increasing the carbon dioxide level, uh, which is leading to a very, very extreme weather condition and it is impacting the health overall uh, at different dimensions. This is all very alarming to everyone. Now, in the Indian perspectives, we are even more concerned because uh, being living in Delhi, uh, I know that how much the uh, pollution is impacting to the people who are living in uh, the metropole like Delhi and other places in India. And therefore, India is looking forward really to have a, a clean energy alternative. And uh, another important issue is the oil consumption rate, India being a very fast growing economy, they have a, a very, very uh, sharp increase in the oil consumption. And that is reflected by these two figures where uh, uh, India is along with the China is increasing the uh, oil consumption rate annually at a very fast rate. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, the oil production of India is almost stagnant. Therefore, there is a huge need for uh, the alternative sources to be uh, found in India uh, and a country like uh, India. Now, the biofuel is one of the alternative sources, which is thought to be very good because it can uh, reduce the greenhouse gas emission by being a carbon neutral. Now, uh, the uh, commercial biofuels which are available in the market they are either ethanol or diesel, biodiesel. Ethanol is coming from the fermentative uh, uh, process of sugars and biodiesel is coming from the transterification of oil. Now, the problem with both of these uh, uh, feedstock that are being used are that they compete for the food and therefore not very viable option for a country like India. Uh, where the food is scarce and uh, people really need uh, food more than fuel for their survival. So uh, what are the alternatives in India uh, which are available? Now, India being primarily an uh, agricultural country, they produce a very large amount of biomass as well in their agricultural uh, production. Now, these biomass can be used as a feedstock to produce fuels like ethanol. 
which can largely take care of the oil consumption demand in India. Uh, now, looking at this possibility, India has made various policies uh, to encourage uh, the uh, 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 innovators and the industrialists to get into this by giving a tax incentive and the viability gap funding. And also, uh, burning of the biomass was another concern, major concern in India that was thought to be uh, taken care of by using those biomass for making various fuels. Now, the problem of making the biomass used for making fuels are that they are very, very recalcitrant in nature. The nature has provided uh, them to uh, stand in a very harsh environment. However, uh, they do have a carbohydrate in them, which is in the form of cellulose and the hemicellulose. But the structure of the carbohydrate and the lignin on top of it really make it very, very difficult to uh, convert it into the uh, uh, monomeric sugar or further to the fuel molecule. So people have uh, uh, developed a different technologies where uh, uh, the biomass could be loosened out by removing lignin and making cellulose and hemicellulose accessible for the enzyme hydrolysis. And further, the monomeric sugar that is being generated can be fermented to uh, uh, fuel like ethanol. However, every step has their own uh, uh, issues and challenges. So the pretreatment is very difficult to get through the biological sources, so it is done generally uh, by the thermochemical means. And uh, of course, being a biotechnological institute at ICGB, we focus more on the biological steps, which are one of the step is next is the enzymatic sacrification. So we try to increase the enzymes. So this is one of the major costs of overall production uh, because enzymes are weak. They are needed in the large quantity and therefore uh, uh, this step needs to be worked out. So ICGV works on increasing the enzyme efficiencies, discovering new enzymes uh, for uh, getting a, a more efficient uh, biomass hydrolysis. The other issue is the C5 fermentation because almost 30% of the agricultural residues also contain C5 sugar. And traditional yeast can't ferment it, so this needs to be also worked upon through various genetic engineering technology. And uh, we also work on finding a, a better fuel molecules uh, beyond ethanol, which has a higher density, energy density, and much more si uh, similar to the uh, fossil fuels like butanol, long chain, alcohol, and alkane. Now, coming to the enzymes, so basically we screen large number of uh, uh, fungal isolates which are available in India. Uh, either in the culture collection or through the soil isolate. Uh, for screening, we have a high throughput screening system and we made a small mathematical modeling uh, to take care of the biomass hydrolysis capacity as well as the enzyme uh, uh, activity. And uh, with a small uh, uh, weighted sum matrix score, we identify the, the most active uh, enzyme producer strain and we try to further characterize them. Now, the most active uh, producer that we screened, the, one of the uh, strain had been the penicillium phenoclosum. When we characterize, we find that their secretome, the enzymes that are secreted outside, they are mostly composed of enzymes that are uh, directed towards the carbohydrate. And um, amongst those, the specific enzymes that are needed for the biomass hydrolysis are plenty. And the highest being produced is GH7 CBM, which is the exosolase, the most important enzyme for crystalline biomass hydrolysis. So we started looking at the characteristic of the exocellulase being a very, very important enzyme. And when we did the structural analysis, we realized that it has a several uh, key features which makes it unique as compared to a traditional uh, uh, CBH1 or cellobiodrylase been used from trichoderma raci. And uh, some of the key features had been the tunnel, which were wider in nature, more open in nature, and the 
uh, uh, extra loop, which helps the inhibition from the product to be much, much uh, lesser. So for that, the basically the enzyme uh, efficiency of the, the newer strain enzyme has been uh, much higher as compared to the efficiency of the older strain that was available. And uh, especially to note is the inhibition constant, which was much better for the enzymes that we have isolated. Now, this was one of them. And of course, the, there were a series of enzymes that fungus has uh, secreted. They were very, very efficient. But as I said, there needs to be, uh, you know, production of more enzymes. For that, we had to develop the molecular tool to engineer the fungi. Now, we found that this particular fungus that we have uh, pinpointed, P. funoclosum, was highly tolerant to various antibiotics that are commonly used for the transformation process in the molecular tool development. Um, since they were tolerant, it was difficult to develop the tool. So therefore, we figured out the reason by studying various uh, transcriptome profilings, uh, why this uh, fungus is much more tolerant to the antibiotics. And we realized that there are drug efflux pumps that are expressed in a much higher quantity in this fungus as compared to any other. And that probably is one of the reasons why it is tolerant to the uh, common drugs used for the screening purpose. So we used various chemicals to block the reflux pump that made it uh, less tolerant to the antibiotic. And therefore, we uh, uh, were able to develop the molecular tool. Now, uh, uh, there are various advanced tools which are now available, including the CRISPR Cas9. We were able to. Uh, uh, show that all these techniques are wonderfully working in our uh, fungus uh, as well. Now, since the tools were in hand, we try to uh, delete and overexpress some of the uh, key targets that would help us to produce more enzymes. And um, the first target was the catabolite repressor uh, gene that was MIG1 homolog that represses the cellulase enzyme production in, in presence of uh, some glucose built up. So we deleted this and we overexpressed some of the key enzymes like uh, uh, cloud B is an enhancer. And then we have a LPMO and CPH1. These are the two key enzymes for the crystalline biomass uh, hydrolysis. So we overexpressed them. So as we can see, there are uh, uh, increase in the efficiency of the enzyme uh, upon subsequent uh, engineering step. And eventually this DIC enzyme 3 that we have uh, uh, from the uh, engineered strain, we used it to compare with the uh, latest enzyme available in the market. And we found that the enzyme dose from the, uh, our engineered enzyme are uh, much less as compared to what is available in the market. And that helped us to make a decision that now we can scale up the enzyme technology at higher scale. So we have recently scaled up our enzyme technology to 15,000 liter scale at a company. And now we are in discussion for further commercial utilization of this enzyme for second generation biofuel uh, production. Now this whole technology has been uh, patented. The US patent has already been granted on the technology. And uh, we are now in the process to get the Indian patent and the patents from other countries as well. Let me shift to uh, the second most important uh, issue in the second generation biofuel production, which is a C5 fermentation. So basically, the C5 uh, is a very significant amount of sugar present in the lignocellulosic biomass, and it is not fermented by yeast. So what we took a different approach. We have taken uh, the E. coli is a platform which can utilize both C5, C6 fermentation. And we diverted the pathway to make ethanol as a source, carbon source, uh, sole, sole product. And then we evolved it uh, uh, through a various uh, passaging on the carbon sources so that its specific growth rate increases. And eventually we were able to ferment uh, around 11% uh, uh, of xylose into uh, 5% of ethanol with a very high yield and productivity 
And the uniqueness of the whole engineering process where we have modulated the indigenous pathways has made us to uh, grant the US patent on this technology. This technology is also being scaled up uh, currently in collaboration with the company. Uh, so beyond uh, enzymes and C5, C6 fermentation, we also work on improving the uh, energy density of the fuel molecule. So for example, the butanol is uh, uh, having a higher energy density as compared to ethanol. And therefore, we wanted to further engineer the host to produce butanol and we used the CRISPR-Cas9 technology to do that. And it was very, very successful. Uh, we are also working on long chain alcohol and alkane production by taking a cyanobacterial pathway and in increasing the efficiency in E. coli as a host. As you can see, we have used a various modeling approach to improve the uh, yield and productivity of those um, alkanes and alcohol, as well as we have worked on the protein engineering approach to improve the thermostability, which is lead to a production of the highest reported so far values of fatty alcohol, which is also called citroil alcohol, to 12.5 gram per liter and 2.5 gram per liter of uh, alkene. Citroil alcohol is another interesting molecule, which is not used, not only used for the fuel, but also in the cosmetics and lubricants. So all these uh, uh, has been, uh, uh, patented at various stages. Some of the patent has already been granted and some of them are in the process of granting. So these are uh, various uh, students and researchers who are who are contributing in the research that I had presented and uh, uh, with the help of various collaborators and funding agencies, we were able to demonstrate where, uh, what I uh, showed today. So thank you very much.